Hi beautiful, welcome to High Vibe Honey for the week of the 9th of December 2019. I'm your host Gala Darling and we have, well, I'm doing things differently this week. This week I'm fucking you up, I'm switching it up on you because I like to play, you know, and I don't like to be predictable and I also wanted to start going more in depth with the cards. So in the past I would pull three cards, we would talk through them and tap on them. This time around, I am pulling one card and I'm just gonna go into it in more depth. And, you know, I've been reading tarot cards for, I guess, a couple of years, but I don't consider myself to be an expert by any stretch of the imagination. So what I wanna do with pulling one card is to not just read about the definition and go by what the book says, but I really wanna feel into it personally and give you a more in-depth, intuitive, deep, meaningful reading rather than kind of being like, this means this and this means that. I really wanna like get in there with you. So this is an experiment for me. I'd love to hear what you think about it, if you're enjoying it. If you like these videos, please be sure to subscribe and like them. That makes me really happy. And our subscriber levels are growing all the time, which is really awesome. So thank you so much for that. Helps keep me really motivated. And we are also, there's like, there's so many changes this time. It's not just that I'm only pulling one card. It's also that we're using a different set of cards. We are using the Weaver Tarot and I love these. They arrived in the mail a couple of weeks ago and they have this beautiful foil cover on them that like makes them an iridescent shimmer. So you know I had to buy those. And if you like these cards, you should definitely buy yourself a set. It's really interesting. Every set of tarot cards has its own flavor. It has its own personality. I have bought decks of cards in the past that every time I pulled a card, it would just give me a shitty reading. It was like so mean. Like there are definitely decks of cards that can be mean. So it's really important that if you're using cards that you really feel good about them, that you build this like relationship with them where you feel really positive. So anyway, enough preamble. We're using the Weaver Tarot and the card that I pulled is the Magi. Now the Magi is the magician traditionally and it's also one of my favorite, favorite, favorite cards. The magician is awesome because in the traditional artwork for the card, the magician has all of the elements at his disposal. He has earth, air, fire, and water. And he is the alchemist, you know, he is able to take any situation and turn it into something different, more positive. He's able to alchemize things, turn like lead into gold and change situations. And this card I think has come up, not because it's like, oh, you can do anything, although that is what it means. It does mean you can do anything. But what I think it really means is, with the magician, it's about your mind is everything and your belief is everything. And what you tell yourself is everything. So if you're telling yourself, I don't think this is gonna work, or I don't know how to do this, or I can never get that right, or I shouldn't even fucking bother with this because I always fuck it up, this card is really serving, I think, as a warning to us this week that we have to get our mind right, that it is everything, that learning to choose the thoughts that are gonna take us to a positive place is the most important skill that we have. And this is something that I've been learning for years now, and I feel like I have a pretty good grip on it, but it doesn't mean that every day is like champagne and roses. A couple of days ago, it was really gray here in Los Angeles, which is really unusual, and I realized that I had to work harder to feel good. I had to like make myself meditate. I had to make myself go to the gym and do some cardio. I had to make myself go for a walk and like get some fresh air and refuel my inspiration. And that's what this card is about. And it's not, it's like the two things run parallel. So there's your mindset is everything. And there's also like feeling good is your job. And so what this card is saying is that we have to do both of those things. In order to feel good, you have to master your mindset. And in order to master your mindset, you have to make feeling good your central discipline, your spiritual practice. So that to me is what this card is all about. 
So if you're feeling right now like you're not inspired, you don't feel good, you have a lot of self-doubt or self-criticism or you're beating yourself up for something or something's not going the way you want it to, I really want you to remember that if you can make yourself feel good despite those things that may appear to not be going the way you want, you need to do whatever it takes to feel good. So I want you to really make a practice and a habit, especially this week, of loading up on things that make you feel good. So whether that's you spend like a couple of hours in the vortex every day watching videos, listening to podcasts, talking in the forum, whether it's that you watch Abraham Hicks videos, whether it's that you listen to Louise Hayes audiobooks on tape, they have them all on YouTube. They're amazing. Just like set it and let it run while you're in your house, you know? Or you follow like Aaron Rose, who's a great friend of mine on Instagram. He does the most amazing Instagram stories where he really speaks truth and he really has this ability to like click your mind into another perspective. He's very, very talented at that. So whatever you have to do to load up on that inspiration, remind yourself that you're powerful and remind yourself that your mindset is everything. That is truly what this card is telling us this week. And you know, that is important all the time. Our mindset is important all the time. But I just feel like, especially this week, it's really what we are being called on to do and to practice and really like, just like dig our heels into this as a practice and make it very, very important to us. So the Magi, which by the way, I had to Google how you pronounce that because I was like, Maggie? Magi? I don't know. So it's Magi. Anyway, so the Magi is also about the fact that we are responsible for the life that we create. If you are waking up in the morning and you're looking at your partner and you're thinking, this fucking bozo again, here's the truth. You have created that and you have the ability to create something different, either to change your perspective about the so-called bozo or to change your life and do something different, to go to therapy with them, to whatever. So we are responsible for our lives. And this card is about really holding ourselves accountable for the choices we have made and the things that we're doing. Are you doing things with this like short term view that you know in three months time are going to hurt you, fuck you up, create devastation and problems in your life? This card says like you are creating your world all the time, not just with the thoughts you think and not just with the words that you speak, but with the actions that you're doing. If there's someone who treats you badly, why are you texting them? If there's someone who doesn't respect your work, why do you keep asking them for advice on how you should do things? Like it's so important that we make these really smart choices and we don't give our power away by you know, indulging in situations that we know are unhealthy for us, things that we know are not going to get us to where we want to go. Like we are at the end of the decade. It's fucking wild. This is a really good time to take radical accountability and really like comb through your life with a little brush and be like, where am I fucking up here? Like, where could I be doing this better? This thing is not working for me and it hasn't worked for me for like 10 years. So why am I still doing it? So it's really important that we start to think about these things. And the other thing about the Magi or the magician, which is way easier to say, I don't have to think about it every time, is that this card is like, don't fucking sulk, don't pout, don't be all sad and down in the mouth about whatever is going on. The Magi says, get the fuck out there and flourish. The magician is so powerful that he has no interest in your excuses and your whining and your reasoning and the fact that you're arguing for your limitations all the time. We do this all the time. Like, oh, I can't do that because X. Or like, uh, uh no, no. The magician is a radical wake up call. And I love this card so much because it really is the, you can be and do and have anything card. It literally is. I remember going to a tarot card reader when I was in a relationship and it was the beginning of the relationship and I was really unsure about what it was going to be. And I was in a disempowered place. I was really seeking advice outside myself all the time about like, what should I do? And I was pulling tarot cards like a maniac and reading my horoscopes like five times a day from 12 different sources. You know, like I was really struggling with feeling out of control and not knowing what to do and like really not tuned into my intuition at all. And I went to this tarot card reader and she pulled the magician and she was like, 
In this relationship, you can have whatever the fuck you want, but it's up to you. You're creating it. Like, don't give your power away to this other person to define the relationship, to define the terms of it. You're in this too. And you're not just some like muggle person who doesn't understand the power of magic and the power of the subconscious. You know that shit. So actually, you have the upper hand here in all of those kinds of situations. So it's up to you to think about what you want to create and then set your mind to it and make it happen. So that's what this card is telling us. It really is a very strong card. It's the second card in the deck and it like starts us off with a bang. It's like, let's fucking go. Whatever you want to create, you can do that. Whatever you want to have, you can have it, but you have to stop making excuses. You have to stop arguing for your limitations and you have to stop giving your power away to other people, their opinions, other people's influences, even giving your power away by like scrolling through Instagram all the time, giving your power away by watching bullshit TV shows where they're selling you this like really fucked up idea of what your life should be like. Like we give our power away in these small ways all the time. And it's really important that we like call it back. Let's start 2020 in a really powerful place where we think about what we really want, not what society tells us we should have, not what the cool thing is, Fuck that shit. You will never be happy if you are judging and like basing your life choices on what everyone around you is doing. It's never gonna work for you. I can tell you for a fact. And you also know this from your own life experience where you have tried to do like what was popular, what was cool, whatever. Maybe you're accepted for like uh, two weeks and then you feel like shit and then they move on and you're like, oh, you're always trying to keep up with the Joneses or the Kardashians as it may be. And like, it doesn't fucking work. So. The, like the magician is a big ass card. It's a big ass card with a lot of messages and primarily the message is like, stop fucking around. Don't bullshit yourself. Whatever you can have, you can set your mind to and you can do it, but you gotta be clear about what you want and why you want it. The why is everything. The why is what drives us. The why is what helps us get out of bed in the morning. If you have a goal, but you don't have a good reason for your goal, you're never gonna fucking get it. But if you know deep in your bones, like I'm doing this for this reason and that's why it's important to me, you'll get out of bed with a bounce in your step every day and you'll be thrilled to do it because it's meaningful to you. Now, another thing that this card is telling us is that, like I said earlier, it's really important that we feel good. So this week, I want you to do whatever it takes to increase your energy. So whether that means you don't eat dairy for a week, whether it means you go and do some cardio, you call your friends on the phone, you go have a dance party, you go to a sound healing, you go to one of those rooms where you can like lock the door and smash a bunch of old televisions with a sledgehammer, like whatever peps you up, whatever makes you feel good, I really want you to invest in that this week because it's going to make everything else work. Like we all have areas of our lives where they're not exactly where we want them to be. Like everything else is pretty much fine, but we have like one or two places where we're like, damn, I wish I had like more money or damn, I wish this relationship was going better or whatever. But the truth is that when we do something that genuinely makes us feel good, that's not about impressing other people or um, doing it for them or anything, we're just increasing our energy to make ourselves feel good, everything in our life grows and expands and gets better. And the reason for that is like when you're increasing your energy, when you're moving your physical body, you're breaking up all that stale old energy. It's like you're feng shuiing your body. You're like getting all this like stale old shit out and you're like shaking it off. And then when you do that, everything starts to move around you. There's all this like fluidity and movement, even though you may not have done anything directly to like have more money or to improve your relationship because you're shaking up the energy and you're doing something different. It can't help but change. It just shifts. That's how things work. So I really want you to think about what you have to do to increase your energy this week. It's super, super important that you do it. The only thing that's stopping you right now is your mind. That's it. No external forces, no other people, no situationships, nothing. The only thing that is stopping you from having what you want is your mind and the things that you tell yourself and the actions that you take based on those stories. Because we would be ridiculous to think that our thoughts don't affect what we do. They absolutely do. If you don't trust men, you're not gonna go on fucking dates. Are you kidding me? So we have to make sure that our thoughts are really clear, that we're not feeding ourselves garbage, that we're really being vigilant at the 
doorposts of our lives. Doorpost is not a word, but whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like we have to be guardians of our own minds. And so I really want you to think about that this week. And I know that you have been practicing mindset with me for probably two years now because it's as long as I've been talking about it obsessively because it's like my religion is to feel good. But this week is a really good opportunity for you to practice this. Things may come up this week where people don't behave the way you want them to. Things don't happen the way you're expecting them to. And you're going to be challenged in that moment. In that moment, you're going to have the choice of like, okay, am I going to fucking crumble? Am I going to sit here in a bad mood? Am I going to sit on my couch and eat chocolate and watch reality television and like shrink my energy down because that feels comfortable and safe? Or am I going to like go to the gym, even though it's fucking raining and I would rather be in bed, but I know that if I go there, it's going to make me feel good. We have the opportunity to practice that this week. So I want these words to ring in your mind when you are having that moment where you're like, fuck, why didn't this work? You get the choice. You get to do something positive or you get to wallow. And I'm telling you right now, wallowing doesn't fucking work. And you know that already. You know that already. You can go there and do that and blah, fuck your whole life. It sucks. So I want you to practice that this week. And I want you to think about it in terms of this is something you're practicing, right? But what is the fucking use of having a tool that you can't access it when you need it? It's one thing to like sing the praises of feeling good and be like, feeling good's my job. But then when something goes off the rails, you fucking buckle. You're not practicing what you're preaching. You're not living your shit. You're not practicing it. So that's when the rubber really meets the road. When things are hard is when we have to practice feeling good even more devotedly with even more fervence. I don't think that's a word either, but we're just fucking going for it today. So <laughs> I really want you to practice what you preach. Practice what you preach, especially when it's hard. And I know for some of you this week, it's gonna be fucking hard. That's okay. And the only reason I say it's gonna be hard is because that's life. Not because like that's what tarot cards say, but like shit happens, right? People get sick, people lose their jobs, shit doesn't work out. Like life can be hard sometimes. But in those moments, we have the opportunity to choose better thoughts, to do better things. And so I really, really, really want you to do that this week. And I hope that this helps you. So after that epic download, we are going to do some tapping. And this week's tapping session is on the fact that I can be, do, and have anything I want, which is the perfect Magi message. Magi? Magi? I don't fucking know. Whatever. I can't say it. It's the message of the magician, bitch. And this is what we're going to do. So <laughs> we are going to start by tapping on the top of the head. Just follow along, repeat after me, and be sure to drink lots of water after this. This might shake up some energy and, uh, and do some like good, exciting, jittery things in your nervous system. So it's good to be hydrated. Okay, so let's start on the top of the head. I can be and do and have anything I want. And I haven't always believed this. But when I look back at my history, I can't help but see evidence of my success. And sometimes there have been things that I didn't get. But again, when I look back at my past, I know that the reason that I didn't get those things was because of my stinking thinking. I knew when things weren't going to work out because I was thinking thoughts that stopped them from happening. I was stressing or obsessing. I was clutching or demanding. I was feeling needy or incomplete. And of course those things never worked out. If you want something beautiful, you have to be in a beautiful state. Beautiful things cannot be attracted to you when you're in a shitty state of mind. So even though in the past my thinking has hijacked my dreams, today I am ready to let that go. Today I am ready to take responsibility for my thoughts. 
and I may not be able to choose my first immediate thought, but I can definitely choose my second one. And when I do this, I create freedom and power. I have the freedom and power to create my life. I have the freedom to think thoughts that empower me rather than burden me and hold me down. And so even though this has not always been easy for me in the past, I'm willing for it to be easy now. I know that I don't have to struggle in order to get what I want. And in fact, the more fun I have, the more successful I am, and the faster things manifest. So I'm really excited to practice this this week. I'm excited to make having fun my cornerstone. Imagine where that could lead me this week. I am willing to surprise and delight myself. And I'm willing to be surprised and delighted by the universe. Because isn't having fun what it's all about? And if I can have fun on the way to my manifestations, maybe that's the point. I deeply and completely love and accept and forgive myself for all the times I fucked it up, but now I know how to do it right. Okay, take a deep breath in hold it at the top and let it go. So your homework this week is to tell us about a place in your life where you have really resisted taking accountability. An area in your life where you've really put the blame on other people, you've really like made it their fault rather than stepping into your own power and be like, fuck this shit, I get to create my life and this is what I'm creating today. So I want you to name that area and then I want you to tell us how you're going to take responsibility for it. Are you gonna change your thoughts? Are you gonna send an email? Are you gonna make the phone call? Are you going to end something, start something, reach, edit something, change it up? What are you gonna do in this area to get some energy moving in a positive way. I would love to hear, and I would also love to hear how you're liking this new format, One Card Wonder, and whether you like it when we go real deep on one card, or whether you just wanna like skim stones across the surface. I personally wanna go deep, but I would still love to hear what you think. So tell me what you think, and I will see you back here next week. Make sure you like this video, share it with your friends, and I will see you very shortly. I hope you have a great week and that these lessons and messages are really impactful and they really resonate with you and that they help you to live a really beautiful life.